No, don't apologize, Ruth. Screw that. The fact of the matter is that we did apply months ago and were denied. And then we reapplied and were denied again. So coming here today was our last ditch effort to save our thesis. And I, I really cannot breathe in this thing, okay? And yeah, maybe I should go outside and get some air, Ruth, because I'm starting to think that this entire idea was a colossal mistake. Okay, I am breaking out in a rash. My boobs hurt. And, and, the truth. Anthony, may I call you Anthony? <laughs> uh, these are not my clothes. Yeah, I borrowed them because I wanted you to take us seriously. Yeah, because nobody takes girls seriously in this field. They just don't. We don't look the part or whatever. But can I tell you a story? Yeah, okay, 1978. I'm at summer camp, right? Picture it. And my counselor, Drew, bless his soul, he tells me and all of the other campers in Cabin C the true story of the Victor Creel Massacre. And little Petey McHugh, you remember Petey, right, Ruth? Yeah, he starts sobbing right there on the spot. I mean, full on hyperventilating. And all the other campers couldn't sleep for weeks. And I couldn't sleep either, but not because I was scared, but because I was obsessed with the question of how could a human being commit such unimaginable acts? I mean, all the other kids, they wanted to be astronauts and, and basketball players and rock stars, but I wanted to be you. I wanted to be you, so forgive me if now I am willing to do anything within my power, including wearing this ridiculous outfit, if it might give me the chance to speak to the man that ignited my passion and let me see a glimpse into his twisted, yet let's face it, totally fascinating mind. So yes, we don't have the official paperwork, but don't tell me that little crybaby Peter McHugh wouldn't have gotten an audience with Victor in a matter of moments because you and I both know that he would. So, 10 minutes with Victor, that's all I ask.